What's up everyone, welcome back to Workshop Rebuild. In today's episode, I'll focus on the BMW R60 slash 5 engine. Many of you mentioned this engine is indestructible. I'm not quite sure of that, so we'll have a good look inside of the engine today. And if there's anything I have to fix or rebuild, I will share that with you guys in an upcoming video. Right now, I'm gonna give you guys a quick walk around on this engine and then I'll dig right into the disassembly process. At first glance, you will probably see that there is a bunch of oxidation on all the aluminum around the engine. Now, this happens to be a cover and on the top, we have another cover. These covers are very oxidized, very dirty, and these will have to be cleaned up in the near future. Uh, these two covers will be removed first. Uh, then later on, I will remove these cylinders and whatnot but the cylinders are also very dirty. And even down below, we have a bunch of oil. So around the oil pan, we have a bunch of oil. And then coming to the back, we also have a bunch of grime and oil around the flywheel. Around the flywheel, we have a bunch of oil. So that might mean our main seal on the back is leaking. Then when we go over to the other side, we will see even more oil and I think uh, this cylinder was leaking a little bit more, maybe on the uh, valve cover gasket because it's very oily underneath of here. And we also have a bunch of oil down here where our filter is located. So this engine is just over 50 years old. And as you guys can see, it is very oily. And that is very common for old engines because if they're sitting for a long time, many of those gaskets just absorb the oil and tend to leak over time. So that's very common. But in today's video, I'm going to break this down and see what's inside. Uh, once I know what's inside, I can then decide if it has to be rebuilt or refurbished. So stick around for the disassembly process.
I successfully removed a bunch of parts on the front and on the top of the engine. After that, I moved to the back of the engine. I removed the clutch with special bolts, and I also removed the flywheel with a special bracket. Once that was off, I had a good look at the seal and it seemed to be leaking right there behind the flywheel. Now I can move on to the valve covers, the cylinder heads, and the cylinders. So let's dig into it.
managed to remove a bunch of parts around the cylinders, the cylinder head, the cylinder, the piston, the push rods, and even the connecting rods. So let me share with you what I have on the table. So I have electrical and wiring to the left. I have some of the clutch components in the middle, uh, some housings up above, and also the valve covers, as well as the cylinders over here. On, on this table, I have other parts and I have them all marked. Uh, how they came out of the engine and I'm gonna be reassembling them the same way they came out but only if they are good. The cylinder heads up above seem to be very good or in great condition at least and the pistons seem to be just fine as well. They seem like they're in great condition so um, we'll have to go over everything anyways but it really comes down to how it measures. Uh, same for the connecting rods. I will have to measure the bearings and see if they are good So I just wanted to give you guys a little overview on how I take things apart I mark everything that comes out and even the push rods I marked what was towards the valve cover and what was towards the engine block Since I removed the big air-cooled cylinders the engine block looks tiny right now as you guys will see I have a puller in front We're ready to pull off the front bearing on the crankshaft. I will be using a three-prong puller um, this is just what I have. BMW does call for a special tool, but this is what I'll use. Once that's off, I will take the tensioner off. That's this right here. And then I'll focus on the timing chain, which goes from the crankshaft to our camshaft. Once the chain is off, I can probably take out the crankshaft, which is higher than the camshaft. Um, that all will come out this side of the engine. And then we're basically left with a bare block. There are a couple things that I have to remove. Uh, but either than that, um, we will have a bare block and some miscellaneous parts that will come off later. So let me dig into this last part of the video and stick around until the end and I'll share with you guys all the parts laid out on the table.
which came off the engine block. One of the last things I took off was the oil filter and the engine oil pan. So that came off and a little bit of oil still just dripped out, but most of the parts are removed from the main engine block. Now, as you guys will see down below, the table is full of parts. We have our cylinder heads, push rods, and our rockers down below. On the other table over there, I also have a bunch of parts laid out. So this disassembly just uh, is very widespread. And as you guys can see, one table is not enough for all the parts. One of the hardest things during the disassembly process, in my opinion, was to remove the sprockets for the timing chain. Um, in the manual, it says to heat them up as you install them. And obviously when you take them apart, it's not the easiest thing just to heat up those single sprockets without the shaft getting warm. So I had to pull them off with pullers. Um, it did work very well but it might not be a tool that everyone has at home that's watching this video. I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is because I think it's already pushing the limit a little bit. Um, I will have an upcoming video of the reassembly for this exact engine. So if you guys are interested in that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below because then you will be one of the first to see those videos. And also, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful in any way, if you could take any aspect of this engine disassembly to your use, uh, please hit that like button down below. I'd really appreciate it. It gives me also some feedback if I'm doing something well on my end. So with that said, stay tuned for an upcoming video. Mm -hmm.